If you thought that taxpayer dollars being used to fund drag queen story times at your local library was crossing a line, wait until you hear what one kindergarten teacher in British Columbia did behind parents' backs. We can just wiggle around, says Worm, like this. Can I see your best wiggle? when they grow up. <laughs> Drea Humphrey here with Revel News, and a kindergarten and grade one teacher in Castlegar, B.C. named Maya Malakoff must be fired. And we've set up a website called firemaya.com so you can send off emails to the appropriate people to get that ball rolling in just one click, if you agree. You see, many of you caught my report last month informing you about how after community pushback initiated by a peaceful coalition of Kootenai, B.C. residents known as Moms Against the Norm, the Nelson Public Library announced that it would be cancelling a drag queen story hour that it had planned. But here's what you don't know. Miss Maya Malakoff, who apparently isn't just a teacher, she's also a spiteful drag for kids activist, decided to seek her political revenge and used other people's children as a weapon to do so. Without consulting parents and with vengeance on her mind, Malakoff went rogue and chose to expose five and six year olds at Castlegar Primary School a drag queen story time of her own choosing a video featuring a drag character who goes by the name of Little Miss Hot Mess, but in reality, his name is Harris Kornstein. Watch some of his storytime video here as he reads a same-sex marriage book called Worm Loves Worm, which promotes cross-dressing to children. I'm Little Miss Hot Mess from Drag Queen Story Hour, and I'm so excited to share a book with you today. Worm Loves Worm. Worm Loves Worm, let's be married, said Worm to Worm. Yes, answers Worm, let's be married. Just make sure you have a band so we can dance, says Beetle. But we don't have feet to dance with, says Worm. We can just wiggle around, says Worm, like this. Can I see your best wiggle? <laughs> Fun, says Worm. Now can we be married? But which one of you is the bride? Asked the bees. How can we be brides, bees, if we don't know who the bride is? I can be the bride, says Worm. I can too, says Worm. How many of you have ever been to a wedding with two brides? Pretty special, huh? But one of you has got to be the groom. Or how can I be best beetle? Asked the beetle. I can be the groom, says Worm. I can too, says Worm. We can be both. Have any of you been to a wedding with two grooms? Also pretty cool. Wait, says Cricket. That isn't how it's always been done. Well, then we'll just have to change how it's done, says Worm. Yes, says Worm. How many of you have ever wanted to change something? Maybe you don't want homework. Maybe you want to change your bedtime. Maybe you wish someone acted a little differently or you wish people recycled more. Sometimes it can be pretty important to stand up for yourself and make a little bit of change. And so they were married because Worm loves Yes. It's no wonder then that one of the parents informed me that after the teacher exposed the children to the drag queen story time, their child came home questioning whether or not they should be dressing in clothing like the opposite sex. And tell me what you think. 
if a child decides to cross-dress at school while their parents are at work, are school educators trained to identify that child as a drag child? Or are sexual orientation curriculums like in BC called SOGI 123 encouraging teachers to instead trans-identify children with such behaviors and use affirmative language and guidance for their sudden gender dysphoria? At Rebel News, we've covered many reports on how the latter is the case. So who is drag queen little Miss Hot Mess, you ask, that Miss Malakoff apparently thinks is such a good role model for the kids? Well, he calls himself a drag queen professor. But don't expect him to teach your kids math or science. No, instead, he's infamous for teaching children how to swish their hips like a drag queen. Who wants to be a drag queen when they grow up? <laughs> on the drag queen go swish 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 perhaps he teaches lessons like that so the children who look up to his colorful character and want to be just like him can soon swish their hips on stage with a bunch of pills to pop or shimmy their hips with a little bit of a strip tease like you've just watched him doing here when he was younger <laughs> From the information you've learned so far from this report alone, I'm sure many of you are already opening up another device and heading to firemaya.com, that's M-Y-I-A, to fire off those emails. But it gets worse. You see, while her impressionable and vulnerable students watched the controversial footage, Malakoff couldn't resist flaunting her exploitive actions. With vengeance on her mind, she actually took a picture of the children watching the show without even so much as blurring the faces of the few children whose fronts can be seen like we've done in this photo here. She then put that picture up on her personal Instagram page with a caption that reads, when our community can't hold a drag reading at the local library due to bigotry and hate, you hold one in your classroom. Hashtag sorry not sorry, inclusive classroom. Except there's nothing inclusive about what Ms. Malakoff did to those children now, is there? Every parent I spoke to whose child she used as a personal social justice weapon that day was both disturbed and outraged by her conduct. Yet instead of feeling free to publicly advocate for their child's privacy and their parental rights, they are united by fear. Fear that doing so will invite zealous activists like Malakoff to falsely label them as bigots and transphobes spreading hate. One parent told me, it almost feels unsafe to speak out about this. That's how Miss Malakoff has made them feel. And the parents, they say the response they've received about the incident from the school itself is another slap on the face. While the school acknowledged the incident, the parents are still not being told exactly what that teacher discussed and showed to their children that day. I had to piece things together for them by looking at the screenshot she put on to Instagram. They say the teacher hasn't officially apologized to them, and the school hasn't disclosed whether or not they will be disciplining her for this infringement on their privacy and parental rights. And that's where you come in. These parents are just regular people who trusted this teacher to maintain professional standards that are in the best interest of their child, not her political agenda. They may be too afraid to speak out, but that doesn't mean that you are. Go to firemaya.com and send off our pre-written emails. You're welcome to revise it. Just keep things professional, unlike Miss Malakoff is capable of doing.
The emails will go to the Castlegar Primary School's principal, Wendy Cutler, the school district 20 superintendent, Catherine Shearer, and district trustee, Gavin Fox, demanding that they immediately investigate Malakoff's disturbing conduct and ultimately fire her for her exploitive behavior. Drea Humphrey with Rebel News. If you are tired of radical sexual orientation activists hijacking public institutions in order to push their ideologies onto innocent children, join others in fighting back today. Go to firemiya.com, send off those emails, and then share this report so that others can do the same.